Hello and welcome to this A-level chemistry question walkthrough video about the equilibrium constant Kc. There are 12 multiple choice questions in this video. Have a go at them yourself by downloading them from the description. Aim to take about 19 minutes to do this. Then watch this video back and see how you got on. Hydrogen is produced by the reaction of methane with steam. The reaction mixture reaches a state of dynamic equilibrium and we're shown the reversible reaction for this here. We're also shown the enthalpy change, which is a positive one, which means the forward reaction is endothermic. Which of the following shows how the equilibrium yield of hydrogen and the value for the equilibrium constant are affected by the changes shown? And we've got four condition changes and we've got the effect on the yield and the value of Kc. I recommend that we start with the value of Kc here because there is only one type of change that affects the value of Kc and that is a change to the temperature. So A, which says that Kc will decrease when you change the pressure, that's wrong, it wouldn't change. Catalyst, no effect on Kc, so that's possible. Increase temperature, increase Kc, that's also possible. And remove carbon monoxide, increase Kc, that's wrong. Only temperature will affect it. So we're now deciding between B and C. If we look at the yield, it says adding a catalyst will increase the yield of hydrogen. And that's not true. It will increase the rate of the forwards reaction, so it feels like we should make more hydrogen, but it will also increase the rate of the reverse reaction, and so those effects will cancel each other out, and so the yield won't change. And so B must be wrong, and C must be correct. And to prove it, we can see that increasing the temperature is occurring, and we are increasing the yield of hydrogen. That makes sense because increasing the temperature causes the equilibrium to shift in the endothermic direction to decrease that temperature back down and the endothermic direction is forwards and that involves the production of hydrogen so the yield will increase. And so C is correct. Methanol is synthesized from carbon monoxide and hydrogen according to the equation below. Which one of the following changes would not affect the value of the equilibrium constant and would not increase the yield of methanol? Well, the value of the equilibrium constant is only affected by changes in temperature. So since we're looking for what would not change the equilibrium constant, we can rule out A and B immediately. The other two changes are changes in pressure. And since we want the equilibrium to shift to the left, thereby not increasing the yield of methanol, we need to look at how this equilibrium will shift to the side with more gas molecules, because there are three molecules on the left and only one on the right. So in order to make the equilibrium shift left and therefore increase the pressure, we should first decrease the pressure. And so D will be the correct answer, because an increase in pressure would increase the yield and a decrease in pressure decreases the yield. The data below refers to the industrial production of nitric acid from ammonia. The equilibrium yield in all three reactions is increased when? A. The pressure is increased. Well, if you increase the pressure, the equilibrium will shift towards the side with the fewest molecules. So if we look at reaction one, there are nine molecules on the left and ten molecules on the right. So the equilibrium will actually shift left. So A is incorrect. B, the pressure is decreased. Well, we've already seen that in reaction one, equilibrium would shift right. If you decrease the pressure, reaction two, though, will shift to the left because there are more molecules on the left-hand side and the equilibrium will shift to the left to raise that pressure back up. The temperature is increased. If you increase the temperature, equilibrium shifts in the endothermic direction to decrease it back down. All of these reactions are exothermic in the forward direction, so in fact all of these would shift left and so therefore decrease the yield. And so D must be correct. It's saying that when the temperature is decreased, the yield will increase. And that is the case. All three of these reactions are exothermic, so the equilibrium will shift right to oppose that change and raise that temperature back up again. And so the yield will increase because we've got more products. The data below refers to the industrial production of nitric acid from ammonia. Possible units for the equilibrium constant Kc for reaction 2 are... Well, if we take a look at reaction 2, you can see that you've got three molecules on the left and two molecules on the right. 
So that means when we write our KC expression, we've got two concentration terms on the top and three concentration terms on the bottom. And so since concentration is moles per decimeter cubed, on top we have moles per decimeter cubed multiplied by moles per decimeter cubed, and on the bottom we've got three concentration terms. When we start to cancel these terms out, we divide one by itself and another by itself, we're left with one over moles per decimeter cubed. And since we always want to have our units on one line, we bring moles to the one, up to the top it becomes mole minus one, dm minus three, up to the top becomes dm cubed, and so that means that B is correct, mole minus one, dm three. Ethanoic acid reacts with ethanol in a reversible reaction represented by the equation below. In an experiment, three moles of ethanoic acid were mixed with one mole of ethanol, and when the reaction had reached equilibrium, 0.9 moles of water had been formed. The percentage of ethanoic acid converted into the ester in this reaction is. Well, to work this out, we have to work out how many moles of ethanoic acid are left at equilibrium. Since we've produced 0.9 moles of water, we must have used up 0.9 moles of ethanoic acid. So we've gone from 3 down to 0.9. And so 0.9 have been used up out of that 3. So we do 0.9 divided by 3. We want this as a percentage, so we multiply this by 100. And so therefore, the percentage conversion is 30%, because we've got 70% of our ethanoic acid left over. And so B is the correct answer. In an experiment, 4.2 moles of carbon monoxide were mixed with 2 moles of steam. When the reaction reached equilibrium, 1.6 moles of hydrogen had been formed. What is the value of the equilibrium constant Kc for this reaction? Well, since we've not been told anything about the carbon dioxide and hydrogen at the start, we have to assume that we've got zero moles of them. Then at equilibrium, since we've got 1.6 moles of hydrogen, we must also have made 1.6 moles of carbon dioxide because there is a one-to-one -one ratio. Similarly, we should have used up 1.6 moles of each of our two reactants because the ratios are 1.1 throughout. Then, since we've got the same moles on the left as we have on the right, we can use equilibrium moles values instead of equilibrium concentrations. And so when we work out our Kc, we do 1.6 times 1.6 divided by 0.4 times 2.6, which gives us 2.46, which is D. So D is correct. The forward reaction in this equilibrium is endothermic. Which statement is correct? If the total pressure is increased at constant temperature, the proportion of COCl2 in the equilibrium mixture will decrease. No, that's not true because if you increase the pressure, equilibrium is going to shift left to decrease the pressure because there are fewer moles on the left hand side. Use of a catalyst will increase the proportion of COCl2 in the mixture at constant temperature and pressure. No, using a catalyst does not affect the proportion of any of the chemicals because it speeds up the forwards and the backwards reaction equally. Reducing the equilibrium constant of CO will increase the value of the equilibrium constant. No, this isn't correct. Only changing the temperature will have an effect on the value for the equilibrium constant. And so D must be the correct answer. If we raise the temperature, the value of the equilibrium constant will increase. That's true. Equilibrium shifts right because the forward reaction is endothermic. Which statement is not always correct for a reaction at equilibrium? A. The concentration of the reactants and products are equal. Well, in fact, this is the answer because they are definitely not always the same. This is implying it is an exactly 50-50 equilibrium with exactly 50% reactants and products, and that is in fact rarely the case. So A is the correct answer. B is a true statement. Equilibrium can be achieved starting from the reactants, or in fact, the products, as is mentioned in part C. That's a characteristic of equilibrium. It can be approached from either direction. So B and C, both true statements. And D, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of a reverse reaction. Again, that is one of the definitions of a system in equilibrium. And so B, C and D are true statements about a closed system at equilibrium. A is a false statement and so is the correct answer here. Which statement is not correct about the industrial preparation of ethanol by the hydration of ethene at 300 degrees C? A. The reaction is catalysed by an acid. That's a true statement. It's catalysed by solid phosphoric acid. B. The higher the pressure, the higher the equilibrium yield of ethanol. 
That's true. There are two molecules on the left-hand side and one on the right. So if you increase the pressure, equilibrium will shift to the right-hand side to decrease the pressure and therefore increase the yield. The higher the temperature, the higher the equilibrium yield of ethanol. This is in fact not correct. If you increase the temperature, the equilibrium will shift to decrease the temperature, which is always in the endothermic direction. We're shown here that the forward reaction is exothermic. We can see that from the negative enthalpy change. And so if you increase the temperature, equilibrium is actually going to shift to the left-hand side and decrease the yield. Which change leads to a higher concentration of SO3 in this equilibrium mixture? So in other words, which change leads to the equilibrium shifting to the right? A, a higher concentration of oxygen. Well, if you increase the oxygen concentration, oxygen is on the left-hand side, equilibrium will shift to the right-hand side to use some of that excess oxygen up and therefore make additional SO3. And so the equilibrium has shifted right and increased the concentration of SO3. And so this is the correct answer. If you raise the temperature, equilibrium will in fact shift left because left is endothermic. If you lower the pressure, equilibrium will shift left again because there are more molecules on the left-hand side and that will raise the pressure back up again. If you use a catalyst, this has no effect on the position of equilibrium at all and so that was never going to be the correct answer. And so A is correct. When one mole of ammonia is heated to a given temperature, 50% of it dissociates and the following equilibrium is established. What is the total amount in moles of gas in this equilibrium mixture? Well, importantly, we start with one mole of ammonia. If 50% of it dissociates, that means at equilibrium, we've gone down to 0.5 moles of ammonia. Now, the coefficients are really important here. We've got 1 to 0.5 to 1.5 as our coefficients. So if we are using up 0.5 moles of ammonia, we will be making 0.5 times a half, so in other words, 0.25 moles of nitrogen. And we'll be producing 0.5 multiplied by 1.5, so in other words, 0.75 moles of hydrogen. And then the sum of all three of these numbers is the moles at equilibrium, and so that is 1.5, and so A is the correct answer. Which statement about the addition of a catalyst to an equilibrium mixture is correct? A. The activation energy for the reverse reaction increases. That's not true. The activation energy decreases in both directions by the same amount. And you can see this from the reaction profile. If we have the reactants on the left and the products on the right, we've got the hill that shows the total activation energy going from left to right, and it's this value going from right to left. If we use a catalyst, that hill gets shallower, and so that means the activation energy is decreased by the same amount in both directions. B, the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction increases. No, it would in fact not actually change at all for the addition of a catalyst. It's only temperature that affects the value for the equilibrium constant. The rate of the reverse reaction increases. This is in fact correct. The rate of both directions will increase by the same amount, and so the position of equilibrium stays the same. So C is correct. Okay, that's the end of this question, and that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.